Good evening and welcome to Limited of Adhesion GT3 League Round 4, approaching the halfway stage. We were on the Asian leg, this time at Fuji Speedway in Japan. New track to the iRacing service. This is going to be a first time for everyone in the league, so this is going to be an exciting race for sure. Once again, I need to welcome back Random Dave into the commentary booth. Welcome back, Dave. How was your holiday? It, it was all right, yeah. I, I, um, I looked at some dolphins and did some skydiving. Oh, hopefully not at the same time, but yeah, it sounds like an exciting little holiday away. Yeah, so yeah. this is going to be the halfway stage, which we can shortly see the standings. I think this is going to be quite an interesting track in terms of it is pretty much low downforce all the way. You've got that massive home straight. A couple of dodgy corners towards the end of the tra track, which I think we might see some spins. And that's going to be interesting when the F3s get there later on in the season in their um, competition. And yes, as suspected, Jordi Speckins well out in front on 142 points, having two wins under his belt at the moment. Stephen Greening in second place, followed by Philip Forrester, Evan Conception, his win obviously at Hockenheim. Ollie Walker takes fifth position for the moment, and Rob Miller up there for the 18. A couple of people further down the order, David Lyon, of course, Miss Lass missed a race already but it will be picking up some points hopefully Don Parker down there True Malaren I expect him to be doing better but uh, he's doing great I heard in the F3 championship at the moment Rick Barrow we're expecting him to be coming back shortly so we'll be awaiting Rick's um, return yeah, that will be exciting to see how he compares to some of the new drivers or the leaders as well uh, yeah all the etrage down the bottom there he skates on a little bit <laughs> And in the Club 1500, Yanaman Pruis out in front on 96 points. Dan O'Hamlin on 72, Eric Pusey on 61, Robert, Roberto Costa on 60, which is making actually for a quite a nice battle there for the top four there. Stephen Kate Bread is sitting on 55, and Gabriel Carollo, who's actually quite pacey in that split as well, on 52. Mark Innes, we can't count him out, of course, 51 points. Chris White on 48, and Steve Pepper on 46, followed by Dan Shaw rounding out the top 10. Um, we've got a contingent of South Africans closely following behind there so that's going to be interesting to see who tops out of those lot. I think all the numbers the, are a little bit confused at the moment because people are taking holidays because it's holiday season and that isn't it? Yeah once yeah. we get to round six or so when the drop weeks come into play that'll be quite interesting to see where everyone falls into place. And in the Constructors Championship at the moment Alpha Esports Red leading the way on 147 points with the Risky Racing Blue chasing them down on 125. A little way to go from Black Dove Racing sitting on 92 points in third place. The A team of course have had a couple of races that they've skipped so they'll be looking to charge up the standings on 74 points. Blackpink on 48, Pure Ice on 44 and Super Time Racing Yellow on 43. Yeah, so there's quite a little mid-pack battle going on there along with Alpha Esports. Wizards will probably be having to work some magic to get themselves up the leaderboard as well. We'll see how they fare in the court, uh, along the second half of the season. And in the Club 1500, it looks like a very close battle between only Dan's and the Wizards Living Coast Transmutation, with two points separating them. Team teamed together on 101 points and a little way down from the other Wizards Living Coast team, uh, McLaren, Super Time Racing Green, uh, and both Team Try Hard teams. Team FET, they have a perennial Team FET, of course, have been around for a few seasons on 22 points. I think that's made up of Jake and Jason Weaver, respectively. And we've got DSR, which I believe has Steve Pepper in there. Right, so this is going to be a, an interesting race. First time we see these GT3 cars in the limited adhesion go head to head, and Rob Miller taking pole position on 1 minute 37.2. Almost a half second lead ahead of Ollie that's Walker. A, which that's is a, that's a lot. Half a second. Yeah. Yeah. He's well done, Rob. Uh, Jordy Speckins in third. Lee Harding back in contention and fourth. Steve Greening in fifth. Gabriel Corolla all the way up in sixth for the Club 1500 lot. So that's a very respectable position and for him. Paul Gerber, Mark Innes, Chris Forrester, Dan Shaw, Chris White, Stephen Maxwell was down the order a little bit there. It does look like there's only a few top split drivers there. We'll see as the um, timing standings go further down the, the leaderboard. But nice way to, for some of the lower order drivers to pick up points today, I think. Eric Pusey down there, Du Gerber. And 
see if we can pick up some more uh, Alvin Kelly. That's a surprising position for him, but I guess he's he has been keeping at the back and just keeping out of trouble as much as he can. Rich Meester's there, Steve Pepper, Stephen Koenig, the world's fastest back marker in 18th. And I think, I think it's like Gavin. Yeah, it's, it's Gareth Winslade in there. I, and Sean Clark just ahead of him. So Gareth opted not to pit the set of time. Jan Van Proos, the club 1500 leader, starting from the back. See how he does and work his way through the field this time. So yeah, battles all over the field, I suspect. A lower, a lower amount of cars this time, but yeah, as you said, people on holiday at this time of the year. Still a respectable amount of people on the track. I think it's about over 20 cars or so. So we've got we've got the A team on pole again. So we're on, on pole in the last race at Hockenheim, I think. Yeah, yeah um, we, but let's um, not talk about that one. But the but we've got yeah, no no David Lyon here. So we've got the better member of the A team. At, on on pole here, so let's hope he doesn't uh, spin off before the uh, start start line. That would be ideal for him anyway. We don't want to see a repeat. But uh, yeah, quite a small field in the top split, but good way for the likes of Rob Miller, Ollie Walker to pick up some points. Hopefully, get against uh, Jordy Speckins, who's leading the way. Yeah, um, as we was saying earlier, it seems to be turn 15 is going to cause quite a bit of a nightmare for some spins and fills. Um, yeah, it is a mighty long stretch. Don't, don't spin it, yeah. Rob. Don't spin yeah. it. Warming up the tyres and it is quite a way down to the pit so the, car, the safety car won't pull in into that line that we see there. Let's see the first it's race of limited adhesion at Fuji gets underway with Rob Miller setting it off in quite some fashion. He's nice to pull a small little gap there ahead of Brody Speckens who gets ahead of Ollie Walker. And let's see if there's going to be any tumbles or nudges into the first corner. And it looks like Lee Harding's managed to get ahead of Ollie Walker, Walker so it's not a good start for Ollie here. Yeah, Lee, Lee's, Lee's been Lee's been struggling with the uh, Mercedes a little bit. He's obviously everybody's new to it. He's new to it too, but um, but he seems to be doing better in this one. Yeah, as we see, Stephen Green just going wide there at the um, I guess it, turn four ish. As we are on board, Chris Forster, who's managed to take first position in Club 1500. So he's short right up ahead of Mark Innes and Gabriel Carollo. A great start from Chris Forster. So I guess we've. Didn't see him take, he must have been taking the inside line on that turn one. Eric Pussy down into sixth position, looking to possibly make a move on Chris White as uh, so they get into this very tight Dunlop chicane. Easy to lose it on the rear tyres here, and of course, right up into turn 15, which I'm sure we're going to see some people slide. It's just an awful off camber turn on the brakes i have to admit i've i've never driven this track i think i've watched some f1 races here um but uh, i yeah i have i have no idea where, where we are are we which which turn is this oh no we're on the home stretch so they've got a complete oh, no, one so that, yeah so i've got a track map to help me out and the next turn is called first yeah so keeping it simple i guess mm. An interesting one. That's the whole single file down that huge stretch. Uh, there's a massive slipstream battle going on. And it looks like Gabriel Carollo has actually gained back to the position into first ahead of Chris Forrester. So it looks like Steve Greening has fell back from that error in the first lap. As we see Mark Innes going slightly wide, picking up an off track most likely. There is a couple of dodgy slowdown areas as well, as we see Gareth from inside. Ooh, bit a bit of a bump and a shove. That looked to be Stephen Koenig ahead of him. Gabriel Carollo, hot on the brakes, just managed to make that move stick against Chris Forrester. It was very, very close on the brakes. Just got in there. 
Yeah, very brave one with ball tires. Nicely done indeed. Lee Harding will be happy with his start, moving from up into third position. So it's surprising. Spaced out. It's surprising to see uh, Kelly and Maxwell that that far down. I I I reckon this this is quite a new track to people, isn't it? So I, I wonder whether a few top split drivers have just downloaded the track and done an hour of practice at the last minute um, to try and learn this this track. You know, um, yeah, in an hour, yeah. and I don't think it can really be done in an hour. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think totally you're track. absolutely correct in that assessment. And yeah, it, it, I've seen it on the iRacing service. It does have um, some quite fun races. I think the TCR um, seems to be quite fun going around this track. I'm not sure about the GT3s, but I have seen it being driven in real life, and it was a uh, it's quite a popular track. I think uh, the Gran Turismo game has this tracking it and seems to be quite popular. I think I may have done a few laps in an F1 game, but um, yeah, maybe only a couple. Yeah, you're, ah, yeah, you're right. I think F F1 was here for a couple of seasons as well. As you see Mark Innes going round, is that, yeah, it's Dan Shaw. Uh, Dan Shaw battling away with Mark Innes, who I still think is going to be quite high up in the standings of, of 1500 come when we shake out the standings. He's a, he's a little bit far down the standings now, but is, is that because of a skip race? I think he's skipped two, in fact. Wow. So, if, I think, if memory serves correct, so we'll be expecting to see Mark up and contending for the next few races up until the end, in fact. So, Gavin Kelly now behind Eric Pusey and a small train forming up behind it. Chris White, so it seems. So a couple of individual battles just going on there. Yeah, uh, Walker's not Innes, Walker's uh, not far behind uh, Harding at the moment. Yeah, he's. Um, yeah, unfortunately for Steve Greening, that means he just lost a slip, and when you come out the slip on that straight, it's just uh, yeah, it just brings you back. Greening tends to be quite patient, though I've noticed he's he's never doesn't have a huge amount of urgency to get into P1 really quickly. Yeah. So buys his time a bit, doesn't he? That looked like Stephen Maxwell getting slammed into turn one. Hopefully he's not picked up too much damage. It looked like someone just missed a breaking point. And Ollie trying to make a move on it here on the Harding. Miller's actually set the pace quite substantially. He's 1.3 seconds ahead of Jordy Spagan, so that's going to take him out of the slip come the home stretch. Yeah, I think he's he's um, starting to get get to grips with this BMW, which is kind of a new new car to him. He's done a couple of races, and he was pretty strong at Hockenheim, wasn't he? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, he was definitely showing some pace until he had an issue. And Ollie trying to get the cut back here on the final corner at Panasonic, it's called this corner name. So I wonder if Lee's going to get the slipstream back here. If it is a, such a long straight, you can actually overtake and then be re overtaken by the end of the straight. And that, this battling's actually caused Steve Greening to actually get back into the contention here that is a lot of time lost from those two just from basically two corners Steve Green will be loving that so back in contention for third position so I'm determined by the end of this to uh, to actually know which corners which is that is that turn six they're going is that called is that, is that called hairpin yeah, now it's, you're going into hairpin, yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, kind of an, an imaginary turn eight and nine. Really just a, a long straight down into the Dunlop chicane. Well, nine is called 300R, I think. Yeah. Why is, it, why is that called 300R? Go you don't go 300 degrees. It's like, or is it 300 minus, you know, is it 3, 360 minus 300? 
it would be interesting to know the inverse of 300 why why yeah, is it called like, 300 r no it's like they've, they've stuck um an angle measurer there and they've worked it backwards or something yeah they just read it backwards didn't they it should be 60 it should be 60 r <laughs> In fact, it should just have no name, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah really. If I call him, and we're going to see a replay here. Stephen Maxwell coming late on the brakes, and that look yeah, way too hot. Let's them go past. Might have some front end damage. Poor Eric Pusey, just a, a moving target for Stephen Maxwell there. Yes, and short chasing down. Keeping up pace with Mark Innes, so this is great. He's just set his fastest lap at 139.4. Oh wow, so Greening here is. Um, he's right in it. Yeah, he's, he's um, well on Lee's tail. Yeah. Noticeably, Jordy Speckman's now closed the gap to Miller, but. I've noticed this track is very easy to lose time if you take the wrong line through some of these corners because there's such wide corners there's multiple lines you can take and if you get it wrong and someone get, the person behind you gets it right they can catch right up as we've seen with those two battling I mean Lee's fallen two and a half seconds behind Walker now and, and, yeah. and some did tell me that um, the thing about Mercedes, it's quite easy to overcook the tyres, to overheat the tyres in it. So I don't know if that's if that's what we're oh, seeing I, here. You're just throwing it go a bit sideways yeah, there, just, didn't we? Yeah, exactly. So well spotted, yeah. I think that's what's happening. So he's probably having to slow down a little to cool the tyres a bit. Uh, there's Gareth Winslade. Nice to see him back in the GT3 league. Uh, a very smooth livery of the Wizards. I think Gareth's a bit happier since he's uh, started driving a Lambo. It, he ended up yeah. driving the Ford for about two seasons because he lost a bet. <laughs> yeah, it's quite a difficult one to drive, but uh, yeah, Lambo, Lambos can be nice at certain tracks, and yeah, Gareth certainly improved over the, the close season, certainly in the F3 where he stepped up. Incredible amount of improvement there. I think he's taking that experience in with the GT3s as well. I think. Uh, I think he, you know, he likes single seaters, and he, he tells me that it's the car that feels the most like a single seater. Oh yeah, uh, uh, I think he's a fan of the is it one of the Lotuses on the IRA racing service as well. As we see Lee Harding going very wide at the airpin, that allows Steve Greening to go by. Yeah, and this also has pulled in Gabriel Carollo from the Club 1500. So really what I said there is get a corner wrong and it really drags your lap time down. Yeah, Lee's really struggling here. I mean, it's, it's now, um, you know, he was in front of Walker not long ago and now he's five seconds, six seconds behind Walker. Yeah, incredible. Yeah, so the top slip ones are well sp spread out. Gavin Kelly's well down the order as well, so I wonder if he's had an issue or he's just uh, biding his time. Might be happy to pick up some points, being in sixth position anyway. Well, I think that I think you know, 24 seconds behind the next driver is. It's pretty heavy on biding your time, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you might just be happy to pick up the points that you get. That you get so. yeah. Uh, so Dan Shaw is going to make a move down the inside on the brakes here on Mark Innes. He brakes late and he's going to have the inside line going to first. Does he carry the speed though? That's an important question. Mark Innes still lingering in the inside and that's going to... Oh, he's going to have to see the position. Dan Shaw being very brave on the outside there. They are catching up to Chris Forrest and Gabriel, who are kind of been held up by that battle between Greening and Harding. I suspect now that Greening's got past um, Harding that um, it might return to normal, start going there, yes. break the pace again. Yeah. Okay. So Geordie's not letting um, 
uh, Miller get away? No, he hasn't, so I'm surprised by that. Uh, it did look like Miller was going to romp away the win. But they're both a fair chunk away from Walker now. Yeah, as we see Gareth Winslade going up the inside of Chris White. Let's him pass safely, I believe. I think Chris just let him go past. It's not... Looks like, I believe, Chris is trying to fuel save a little bit here. So it might know something that some of the other drivers don't. But he looked at the fuel and it appears that they might be able to reach the end of the race without taking a pit stop if they are able to or they use their common sense. But we'll see how that strategy plays out when we reach the end of the race. Chris Forrest is going very wide there. Trying to pick up as much pace as possible and as much track. Do you know what the off tracks are like around here? Some of them are okay. I mean, you can take, two, uh, I think it's four wheels, counts as an off track at that point there, but some of them do have a quite a nasty uh, kind of slowdown. I think it's at Coca Cola. If you go wide there, you're going to have at least a second slowdown, a 1.5 second slowdown, depending on how far you get there. Steve Pepper, we haven't seen him so far this race. And it is Japan livery as well. Quite fitting. He's in 10th position. And he's got Stephen Koenig just behind him. Gavin Kelly in the pits. I wonder if that was a scheduled stop. Quite early. And the gold rims of Chris Forrester and he, his car takes a beating going over those massive sausage lumps there. Oh, and clips Dan Shaw. And <laughs> it's kind of a tug of war going on there. Yeah, it's like they just got sucked into each other a little bit there. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like, you know, when, when you crash into somebody, you think, if I just knock them again, I can get them pointing in the right direction. But that all just went horribly wrong. Yeah, it did, yeah. It's pretty unfortunate. I think that's some front end damage on the as we've seen his bonnet lift up a little bit. And this is another tough corner to judge the breaking point, the very last one. Nah, I, I think he thought he straightened him out and... <laughs> yeah, didn't really know where to go. Yeah, it's a weird one, that. It looks... See, yeah, he's fixed it there, but then it kind of looks like he's turned in for another go. But I'm sure, I'm, <laughs> I'm sure he hasn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Martin is narrowly avoiding that collision as well. So, but gaining two positions in the process, he'll be very happy with that. That will allow him to try and chase down Gabriel Carollo, who's built up a five-second lead. And that has actually allowed... Gareth Winslade to close up on Forrester and I wonder if that's aero damage going to be affecting Chris's race. We'll of course have a quick player once he reaches the pits if he's going to stop and some inside information I believe he doesn't have enough fuel to reach the I think he's almost like half fueled his car so I believe he will be pitting around the halfway stage, if not earlier, based on the damage he's got there. So Harding, um, you know, I, 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 we kind of thought maybe that once Greening got past, he'd just run and hide, but he's uh, Harding's stayed right, right with him there. Yes, yeah, so he's managed to pick up the pace again, so I guess he's cooled down his tyres a little bit and then cracked on. Maybe it's just, you know, because he's he's not defending anymore, so he doesn't have to yeah. take weird lines. Yeah, so he's Chris sticking behind Gareth around the Coca-Cola corner. You're doing very well at recognising which corner's which. I guess this is where I should go by the, the map on the top right. Yeah, so you, you've got Coca-Cola, you've got Hairpin, or you've got First, obviously. Panasonic is the last one 
Dunlop is the, the tight chicane. The other ones I'm not too sure. Of course, you've, now we've got that 300R, which they've just went through there, which we were berating earlier. Do Gerber's hot on the tail of Chris White here, so Do's managed to hatch up. He's doing pretty well. There's a lot of advertising in the corner names, but um, there is, yeah. yeah. But they're, uh, e they're either advertising or they're just the angle, and one of those angles is wrong. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> or there's one called Nets. What's Nets? Ah, Net is that between 14 and 15? Yeah. Or is it maybe maybe it is that corner 15, which is the one we're probably going to see people slide up on once the uh, tires are quite heated up. Gareth Winslade setting a 39.6, his fastest lap of the race so far. Looked like uh, Stephen Kernick was off track just for a second there. So the gap is closing between Miller and Speggins here, it's now down to half a second. It is, but they're both pulling away from Walker, they're now six, six, nearly 6.5 away from Walker. Yeah, it's going to be interesting how that plays out. So. Stephen Kearney, he was off track for a moment, I did notice, so I wonder if he's coming in for a... Yeah, I guess he might be able to fill himself up and get a faster player. Uh, let's see what happened to Chris Forrester. Taking another trip. Hope the suspension's alright in his car, it's taking a battering. Well, I think the barrier kind of helps with the battering there as well, but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rough ride for Forrester in the past couple of laps. I'm sure he's went to the pits. And, and he has. He might be coming out now. Oh, well, there's three tenths between here. Yeah. Looks like he's happy to sit behind Miller for the time being. Well, given that he's now nearly seven seconds in front of Walker, he's probably just thinking, you know, playing the long game. No yeah. real, no real rush. There's nobody from behind bothering him. Yeah, and you can just kind of copy what Rob's doing strategy-wise. and Yeah, it's going to be an interesting one as we've got 25 minutes still remaining. As you see, a nice graphic there on the bottom. Right, how that gap has changed. The gap between Corolla and Innes now only 4.4, so it looks like Mark Innes is closing slightly. And it seems to be a Q for me behind White as Gerber and Shaw are right behind him according to the standings. Yes, it's just a, a long game battle between these two at the moment. No pressure on Jordi. I mean, at this stage, it looks like geordie has got a slight pace advantage, but they've both got a pace advantage over everyone else. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. You know, people tell me that with the GT3s, that if you go easy on the, you know, for the first couple of laps, then you get kind of more pace, you know, in, in the middle of a stint. Um, yeah, which I, which I know, I, I know, kind of is the case in real life. But I, you know, I just, I just don't believe that a simulation can be as um, realistic as that, really. <laughs> well, we might find out. Um, this is Steve Grinning and Lee Harding. Lee Harding now in fourth position. So, nice little battle going on between those two, and I wonder if Steve will look to make the position back, or will he be sitting behind just like Geordie? Uh, we've seen earlier quite a queue forming behind White, and it looks like Pruis has opted to go into the pits and not be held up a little bit. But Shaw and uh, Shaw's got ahead of Gerber already. Did I miss something? Did Greening do a mistake then? I think he just uh, got in this the slip. Uh, Lee got in the slipstream of him, and then passed him to the bottom at first. See a replay here, Dan Shaw. 
possibly making a move on Dugova around the inside as well making the corner a little bit tighter for himself but he does get the job done with Janemann Pruis in the background there I think he seen that there was going to be a battle between these three and opt the pit to keep himself out of it that's a trick I've seen from people driving in Gran Turismo is you can really abuse that first curb on the Dunlop chicane you can actually ride right over it What's Gran Turismo like these days? Because I, I don't think I've played it since the first one. Aha, uh -huh. yeah, and that's White losing the back end at that notorious 15 corner. So his tyres will be pretty lit up for a couple of laps. Gareth Winslade set the fastest lap of the Club 1500 at 139.2, so that's absolutely storming. So he's really put the, the blazers on his car uh, yeah only two seconds behind it is now so that's dropped from four seconds what kind of pace are the, are the top five doing at the moment yeah it's going to be interesting i think it was around about what i think it was 130 low 138 wasn't it or so i think the qualifying time was 137 It'll be interesting to see how as the fuel consumption goes down and the tanks empty how quickly these guys can go. Steve Maxwell now behind Gavin Kelly. So this is a battle for position. And both hopefully Maxwell will get his breaking point right this time round. Yeah, but I mean they're both flapping slower than uh, than Gareth. A fair chunk. The, okay, the top, the top two, um, they're uh, half a second faster. Walker just set a similar lap to what Gareth just set. Mm, so Gareth really showing some pace then. I just, I, I mean, I, you know, I'm sure he is, but I also wonder whether he's, you know, got less fuel on maybe. You know, we'll Wait, see, possibly. see how that pans out. So Maxwell didn't make the move this time stick but he managed to catch up in this last couple of corners he might have a nice run on the home straight interestingly only Forrester, Koenig, Clark and Gerber have stopped so far and Pusey of course who is now making his way up the order standings as they are Miller leading the way from Spectins, Walker in third, Harding in fourth, Greening in fifth, followed by Kelly, Maxwell and Gerber rounding out the top split. And it's Crowell leading the way ahead of Innes, Winslade, Shaw, Gerber, White, Meesters, Pepper, Pusey, Pruis, Forrester, Koenig and Clark. So all the guys within the Club 1500 still racing, which is great to see. I reckon there might be some battles coming up towards the end of the race. Meesters, Pepper, Pusey. It'd be interesting to see they, they might end up passing each other at some point. Is that Miller? That's Miller about to lap Kelly there, but I guess Kelly's pitted. Yeah, indeed he has. And of course, Stephen Max was probably pitted as well after his issue. So, not a good day at the races for Maxwell as he. Gavin goes very wide indeed. Um, Miller's, Miller's yes. pulling away from uh, from Geordie quite a lot here. Have you seen it's gone from one second to 2.5? Yeah. Just wondering why that is. So, uh, that would definitely be interesting to know whether perhaps Geordie had a, a bit of an issue. Oh. As, as they all disappear in 300R. Lee Harding carrying a lot of pace there into that corner. Greening still sticking with him, he's within a second. So that position is still up for grabs. Nice wide track to uh, to get past back markets. Yeah, it is indeed, yeah. It's a, it is a very wide track. So 
so I, I don't know. I don't think that's uh, that's Miller just shooting off a distance. I think uh, Jordy's uh, just have, has maybe not has issues, but he's, he's um, but you see Walker's caught up with, with Jordy here. So it's definitely let's see what his next laps. Oh, I don't know if it, yeah, it must be in a previous lap, then, I guess. Yeah, I think yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's something something must have happened. But saying that, Jordy's now stepped up the pace a little bit. Be interested to see what. Yeah, I, I was just going to say what lap time Lee Harding is setting. So now he's starting to pick up the pace a, a low 39 because we were certain, setting about 39.6s. So Wednesday's down to seventh again. I wonder if he's pitted. He, I think we must have missed that. He's must have yeah, pitted. He so, did, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. So yeah, he he. Uh, he I haven't, seen, I haven't seen too many t t uh, too many others hit yet apart from for damage so yeah he must have uh, been carrying yeah. less fuel yeah definitely and the race leader in that split Corolla was also pitted so that's leaving Mark Innes out in first Dan Sean second and Du Gerber in third for the time being I think is that the Haiti flag that Gareth's got on there. Does he pick a random country? Oh, maybe, oh, maybe it was a spin, not a uh, not a pit. Yeah, it's that turn 15. It really does cause issues. It didn't seem bad enough to lose five places, so maybe it was a spin and a pit. Yeah, I think you might be right. Let's see, if, if he pits again, then I was wrong. Steve still in that slipstream of Lee. I don't think there's a particular advantage of any car here. I want to say that Audi might be good, but I don't think we've got too many Audis on here. I'm not, I'm not sure if I've seen There's one. not many to judge from. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it's... I, I don't know, I, I haven't driven it, but it feels to me like it would be a BMW or Mercedes track. Yeah, it could possibly be. Of course, we've got a lot of BMW drivers here. Oh, Stephen Maxwell. In six, it looks like, it appears that he hasn't pitted, but I, I thought he had had him after his issue. Uh, well, these two have a good race. Yeah, I'm enjoying this because uh, no one's really pulled away from each other in this one. So. Yeah, you've got Walker in sort of no man's land there, really. Yeah, it's it's just a, it's a weird one that he's not gaining or losing any time now to Jordy, but at the same time he's just nowhere near. Harding and Greening as well. It's pretty lonely, lonely race for him. You kind of get the feeling that if these two weren't battling, they may be further up. Yeah, they walk to get away. So this is Du Gerber on the tail of Chris White, challenging for third position. Fourteen minutes left or so. Uh, I was yeah, I was wondering how Chris managed to get ahead of Do. Just dodging him there at the hairpin. He was doing pretty well this race. Nice to see him challenging for a podium. Quite a way back to Gabriel Carollo. We'll see having pitted. Of course, it says, it says pit stops there, doesn't it? And we can see Winslade has pitted. Yeah. Uh, but everybody, yeah, from the top eight or nine hasn't pitted. Yeah, so people are trying to stretch this out and see if they can go the distance. Has it, has it all along said how many stops in that column? Because earlier on I was saying, oh, I was wondering, yeah, has Winslade pitted? It's like, it, it's that column being there the whole time. It saying how many now how and many. again <laughs> it appears now and again i guess uh, like, have yeah. i have i just missed that the whole time 
<laughs> and and people are going to be watching it and and i'll be saying oh i wonder how many step stops he's done they'll be like dave it's there in front of your eyes <laughs> it's, the, it's the second column so, fast, oh, fast yeah. slap by Jordan. yeah absolutely that, that is a very fast lap indeed because that's almost on the same pace as the qualifying lap so putting the pressure on but still two second gap but I say, may come down wasn't Miller's um, qualifying lap of 37.2 wasn't it, it yes yeah, it's, it's, it was half a second faster than everyone else yeah that, that was absolutely insane oh, Steve thought about going for the dive bomb then thought better of it but throws down the anchors and brings the gap down to three tenths it appears that Du Gerber has now pitted I mean if I were one of these two I'd pit now Try and get some clear air. Hmm. Yeah, can't be doing the times any good if we keep battling position, especially around here. This is the slowest part of the track. It's not going to happen. It's got the insides. Yeah. Yeah. The midsection of this track is. Not bit, not bit around there. Yeah, it's very demanding on those rear tyres, especially here. You have to take a wide line. And it kind of uh, off camber turn puts a lot of pressure on there. It's getting very wide to try and get good exit, but there's you need you need a straight after the exit, and <laughs> here's one. But um, well, it's too far away, I think. Yeah, you need to be right up in the bumper really to make that effective. I, I've got a feeling um, that um, that lead tends to. I don't know whether it was Mercedes or just. The way Lee sets up that Mercedes, but it's um, it, you know, it, it tends to be good down the straight. Oh yeah, definitely. Steve Green just losing the tail end a little bit, so he is pushing. Yeah, he definitely is pushing. You can see going up slightly wide there at the corner. Color. as possible in the hairpin yeah nine minutes left so still a little way to go About six seven laps surely they, they must all be coming into pit around now yeah and unless the fuel restriction hasn't been applied and of course drivers may change their fuel strategies so they might opt to under fuel the car but most people just opt just to run as long as they can right so this is yeah. unusual to see that much of a difference Geordie's just done a 38 zero, which is the closest I've seen to 37 so far yeah that's, that's absolutely flying 8 tenths quicker than Ollie so Ollie seems to be just stuck there really Well, at this point, Ollie's looking back, you know, 13 seconds yeah. to Harding. Like, you know, just going to have a nice Sunday drive, really. You know, yeah. like <laughs> seven seconds to Geordie. I'm not going to be able to do much about that. So, yeah, just um, consolidate, I guess. But it's good to see uh, Miller leading. I, I, it's been a while since I've uh, seen him uh, leading a GT3 race. It's like two yeah. or three seasons ago in a spa, I think. Yeah, so he's definitely been pretty impressive around this track and it's going to be interesting how he will perform in the F3 at this track later in the season as well of course he's very rapid in the F3 so I, I would put my money in the hat for him to be right up there in that race well I mean looking at this he seems just as rapid in the GT3 right yeah yeah it's incredible so I don't think he's won an F3 race this season yet. Correct me if I'm wrong. So, 
Yeah. yeah. And what's going on here? Geordie's 10 seconds behind Miller. That's, that can't be right, can it? Was he spun? Uh, yeah, that, that, well, you need a replay of that because... And Walker's now right on his tail. It certainly can be a pit stop because it was only 7 seconds. 46.4, look. Oh, so he definitely has had a spin. That is interesting and not what he needed. I mean, I he, he, just, gonna come he just set the fast lap of the race as well, so I think he was just really going for it, wasn't he? For the, for the lead, yeah. yeah. Oh no, look, it's popped back to two seconds again. So that was a glitch. Wow, well that, how did that happen then? Bugs. Uh, <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> I don't think he's really, he's just like, you know, he, he spun and then decided to leap forwards by eight seconds. Yeah, so you did oh, spin on. at the what? hairpin. So what? Unless... <laughs> Unless... Holly's also, <laughs> also had a spin oh, back. No, but he's now two seconds behind Rob, so it's what is... No, look, look at that. that like yeah, he's back to it. Yeah, okay, right, yeah, that, that was a replay. I'm just getting confused. And uh, look, the column for the stops has gone away again, so... That definitely <laughs> was missing before. <laughs> Saved yourself from embarrassment there, so... <laughs> Yeah, so I wonder if team orders will come into play, knowing that geordie has got a driver championship. So if I'm right that Oli earlier on was just kind of coasting a bit and consolidating third position, at this point, if he's done that, he's probably kicking himself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he could be well ahead of Geordie based on that error. But saying that, Oli could have a faster car now, because I think if geordie has been pushing so much, his rear tyres are going to be pretty, pretty worn and hot. So, but saying that, will he want to overtake his teammate? Yeah. Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> so, oh, that, that's a great move by Lee Harding, just tucking himself in front of the that traffic, but doesn't stop Steve Greening from getting the job done around that car. So there must oh, okay. be some funny business going on with the pit with the uh the, with the fuel level here because they they should have pitted by now. Yeah, I believe that I think the fuel has been set at max so or at least that they wouldn't have to stop. Which seems to be the case because top five in the top split plus I think Innes and White in Club 1500 haven't pitted. Something's got to happen with these two. Something has to happen. They've been at it the entire race. Just the two of them for the entire race. Like, I mean, just just send it, Steve. <laughs> just, <laughs> really just, 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 you've, you have to at this point. Just send it. He's, you know, he's, got, he's got a couple of laps left. Send it. Yeah, he's looking pretty racy now. Yeah, he's taking that wide line to try and... I think he might get it on this straight now. He's definitely a lot closer. You know, you can only bide your time so long. Now is the time that he has to do it, right? Yeah, I think I think he's going to get it done on this straight now. You see Eric Pusey in fifth position uh, taking on Gareth Winslade. So this is a battle for position. Um, Dan Shaw also in the background. He went a little bit wide there. But he's definitely pushing to keep up with those guys. As we see, Lee Harding it just went defensive into the first turn. The thing is, at this point, what you know, once you've defended for so long um, successfully, then you kind of work out how to do it, don't you? Yeah, that's true. Uh, once you get into the kind of routine which Lee has, he's gonna be able to make that car quite wide and that is, the onus is going to be on Steve to get a good one basically on the, the home straight really I think that's the only place you can really make a distinguished move where you're going to get a gap from Lee it's a nice little battle here between Winslow, Pusey and Shaw coming together between Shaw and Pusey oh I thought he was going to fully 360 it there, but he got away with it. <laughs> yeah, managed to stop it, so... Pusey's got a bit of work to do, he's going to have to try and overtake Shaw again. 
and that's allowed Winslade to get away. So or there's, cement. there's a few drivers here that have pitted then. Um, maybe because they didn't know about the fact that they didn't have to pit. So, you know, yeah. the likes of Winslade going to be a bit, a bit miffed about that. Yeah, I think they're going to be kicking themselves because, yeah, Corolla, Winslade, Pusey, Shaw definitely would have been fighting for holding positions. That being said, Mark's 30 seconds ahead of the next driver, so I doubt Winslade would have got in. Possibly not, you never know, but yeah, definitely they'll be kicking themselves for taking an early stop, or at least not. Yeah, that's, that's a difficult corner to judge, two different racing lines in there. Dan was trying to slow down, let him pass, doing a nice sport, sportsman-like thing, which is great to see. It doesn't seem right that Mark's 30 seconds ahead, though. I'm wondering whether that's um, whether that's glitched out. Me, is he really 30 seconds ahead of the next uh, club driver? I, th I think White had a spin, and I think White also thought he had to fuel save, so I think he was not pushing. I think he was setting like 141s, 142s to try and save fuel. <laughs> so I think that's. And I think, judging by the lap time now, he's just realised that he's going to have enough fuel for the end of the race, so he's now picked it up to 140.6. So yeah, smart play from Mark Innes. There's a gaggle of cars here, so who's all here? It's, looks like Paul Gerber, I want to say. Uh, and yeah, of course, Lee Harding's in here. Come on, Steve. Does this affect their... Come on, send it, Steve. Lap. Yeah, come on. You've got you've got, you've got a bat mark here that get, give you a double toe. I don't know. I think I think I think, I think Lee far. must be very fast down the straight here. It's incredibly frustrating. But then he has overtaken him once, and then he got re overtaken. So, well, I think that's he, this is the lunch. Is this the last lap? I would think so. It's coming up to the white flag lap, I believe. It's one after, maybe. Yeah, there's Steve Pepper. We haven't seen too much of him. Letting the Dan Shaw and Eric Pusey go through. So these two are still battling for position as they come back to the Don Lobster Cane. Let's see if there's going to be any bumps and shoves. You know, they both get through there cleanly. Oh, and who's. Whoa, Steve Greening's off. Oh, did he send? Uh, he probably nightmare. He probably, he probably sent it. <laughs> he did. <laughs> it's a random Dave curse there. Let's see a replay of that. Yeah. And sure pushing. And it does indeed take a conclusion here at Fuji as Rob Miller wins here at Fuji. Congratulations, Rob! Great win. Oh, nine seconds like ahead of Jordi Speckins. So that's a great drive from Rob. Ollie Walker takes third position. And then it looks like Lee Harding is going to get ahead of Steve Greening at I, the end. I mean, I'm, I don't, I've seen the replay, but I suspect that Greening sent it, um, knocked him slightly, and then gave the place back because it's a fair yeah. thing to do. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But um, that's how it plays out all the time. I mean, once I see the replay, I'll be showing, right? Where's the replay? We'll soon see, as it looks like. Ah, there's Steve Green crossing the line. And Mark Innes takes a win here in Japan for the Club 1500 split. Congratulations, Mark. So Mark, Mark really wasn't far behind Harding and Greeding there. No, all. he wasn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's not, too, not too bad showing for Mark. I think I think he will be looking to go into the top split come next season. He's definitely showing some pace. Chris White taking second, he will be happy with that. I think he only got second based on the uh, fuel consumption and non-appearance of a pit stop. Flashing the lights in. Enjoy it while it lasts, Chris, because I probably won't see you in the podium too many times this season but there goes Gabriel Carollo who we probably will see he is quite a contender for the 
1500 split at the moment. So he takes third position. Well done, Gabriel. So, the race comes to conclusion here in Fuji. Rob Miller, great win. Well done, Rob. It's good to see uh, Rob up there. It's a shame there, there isn't a second. There we go. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. just pushed oh. too hard in the corner. Yeah. Well, I don't know actually. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. I think uh, did um, did Lee kind of just lose the back end there slightly? I, th I think it's like a difference of pace. Lee went a little bit wide at that hairpin, and of course, Steve he took the inside line and ma managed to get on the power early. I guess led to the uh, collision. So Rob Miller takes the win here in Fuji. And Jordy Speckens takes second position. Ollie Walker takes the final podium position. Well done, Ollie. And Lee Harding obviously takes fourth, followed by Steve Reading in fifth. Steve Maxwell takes sixth position, and Gavin Kelly in seventh. Paul Gerber retired, but does take eighth position nonetheless. So only eight cars in the top split. And in the Club 1500, Mark Innes takes the win of Chris White in second. Gabriel Corollo in third. Gareth Winside takes fourth position, he'll be kicking himself, he could have got up onto the podium, I suspect. Eric Pusey in fifth, Dan Shaw in sixth, Du Gerber takes seventh position, Rich Mises in eighth, Yannamin Pruis in ninth, Steve Pepper in tenth, Stephen Koenig in eleventh, Chris Forrester, then Sean Clark. And the championship standings now. Jordy Speckins in 185 points, so 65 points behind is Steve Greening. He'll be looking to pick that, that up in the next race. Rob Miller shoots up three positions now on 96. Ollie Walker on 82. And a little way down to Lee Harding. Philip Forrester wasn't here today along with Evan Conception. Uh, Steve Maxwell makes up a few positions as well. It'll be interested to see if Nigel Joblin, Mike Messenger, David Lyme also hopefully be back for the next race. We'll see them shoot up the point standings. Janemann Preuss leading the way on 103 points in the Club 1500. Mark Innes closed that down, so it's only two points between those guys, so it's very, very close. Chris White on 90 points. Gabriel Crow on 88. Eric Pusey on 86. And again, it's, it's absolutely close between all the top five. Dan Hammond wasn't here today, but his teammate was in the form of Dan Shaw on 63 points. Roberto Costa wasn't here on 60 points. Steve Peppers there on 52 points. So See Steve hopefully picking up some more points, of course, as well for DSR. Into the Constructors Championship, Alpha Esports Red on 225. They're running away with it this season, it looks like. Risky Race in Blue on 150, followed by the A Team on 125. But bearing in mind, David Lyon was away. That's going to be a, a very close battle between those two for the second and third positions. Black Dove Racing on 112 points, so it's a long way down to sleepy time racing. But I believe Rick uh, is going to make an appearance pretty soon in the near future, so they will definitely pick up some points, I suspect, towards the end of the season. And in the Club 1500, it was very close, and it still is very close between Only Downs and Team Heap together, to other Wizard Lifts and Crunch Transmortification. Clara also there, Sleepy Time Racing, so there's a good four or five battling for the second, the sixth position, but it is uh, Transmutation, the Wizards that, that are out in front by quite a substantial way, so yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if only Dan's make a comeback or not. We'll see if Dano can pick up some points in the second half of the season. My driver of the day, I think. I think he has to go to Rob. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a great drive from him. Nice to see one of the kind of perennial members of the Limited Adhesion take a win there. And I think in the Club 1500, well, it's difficult. I'll, I'll, I'll say Mark for the win as well. It could have been someone else had the possibly not pitted, I think. But, uh, possibly. Um, I mean, and maybe partly what makes you hesitant as well is that, you know, Mark ought to be in top split. So, <laughs> yeah, possibly. Uh, I think uh, another honourable mention out to Du Gerber. I think he was doing pretty well up until he, he had a, a, an issue. He was looking to get into the podium as well. So, yeah, 
any other drivers that stood out for you today, Dave? Um, I thought Winslade until he pisses in his spun. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I just can't get over that. Lessons learned, I guess. But um, yeah, I'm sure that won't happen again. But yeah, very unlucky for him. But uh, yeah, very enjoyable race. What did you think of Fuji at the first time this for our league? Um, I mean, I don't know. To me, it was like very wide grey tracks. I mean, I'd have to drive it, to be honest, to, to form a conclusion on what I think of the track. Um, I Yeah, it's... Um, didn't it doesn't there's not enough kind of like uh, furniture around for me as be able to tell where you are on the track right <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah we need, we need to start a petition to rename some of those corners as well but i guess that wraps things up next time we're gonna be in imola i think we've got a couple of weeks break the mid-season break so you'll no doubt hear from us shortly but uh that wraps up from the asian section of our season and um, japan So from Fuji, it's a goodbye from Chris and goodbye from Dave. Cheers.